get to go first. Finally. Oh, come up here, Lillian Ramsey. Okay. Good morning to, well, good afternoon to one and all. It's uh, great to be here with our special guests, Randy Weingarten, President of the American Federation of Teachers, and someone I have known for about 40 years when she was a chapter chairman or whatever she was. Clara Barton High School. What, right, Clara Barton High School. And Lily Eskelson Garcia, who I've known for a shorter amount of time but with as much affection and respect. And, of course, our great leader, Nancy Pelosi, who I have known since 1986. Okay. And Patty Murray, who I have known since 1992. Okay. Now, thank you for coming and hearing my life's history and we're about to. Anyway, uh, I want to, we're here today because teachers are marching on state capitals across the country, demanding higher pay, better working conditions, and more resources. They're not just fighting for themselves. They're fighting for the future of America. They're marching in blue states. They're marching in red states. Teachers of America, we Democrats hear you loud and clear. We hear the teachers who are demanding more pay, who work so hard every day to educate our students, but must also punch in at a second job to make ends meet. We hear teachers who are so committed to their students but who work in schools that are so underfunded that they pay hundreds of dollars out of their own pockets for school supplies. Look, for the better part of the 20th century, being a teacher meant being part of the robust American middle class. You worked hard, you never became rich, but you received decent pay and benefits, enough to afford a home, a car, a vacation, and raise a family. But unfortunately, teachers' pay for the last 20 years has been falling behind. That matters to all of us, not just to teachers. We need great teachers in every classroom so that our children have every opportunity to succeed. In my view, teaching should be an exalted profession in the 21st century the way doctor or lawyer has been an exalted profession in the 20th century. Teaching is every bit as important to the future of this country. And teachers' pay should more, more, clo and teachers pay should more closely reflect their value to society. Every one of us knows teachers who've changed our lives. I can remember Mrs. Roberts at Cunningham Junior High School or Miss Riley in Madison High School. They changed my life. I wouldn't be here without them. It's an important, important profession, and these days in America, we don't treat it that way, at least financially. So we Democrats have a plan to help our teachers and students. Our plan will do a few things, which my colleagues will detail shortly, but it would be a major boost to teacher pay, investments in school infrastructure, and increasing academic opportunities because our investment in teachers' work should match the work they are doing for our kids. I want to tell you about the first plank of our plan to provide a better deal for teachers and their students. Under our proposal, we would dedicate $50 billion to states and school districts to increase teacher compensation and recruit and retain a strong, diverse workforce over the next 10 years. It's hard enough to recruit young people to join the teaching profession, even harder to retain those who do. Teachers' pay should match the work they are doing for their kids, and that means significant investments. This is not just a spend expenditure, it's an investment if there ever was one. We achieve this by repealing the Trump tax cut for the wealthiest of Americans. How many Americans think multimillionaires should get a tax break versus teachers, their kids' teachers, being paid a decent salary? We know whose side the American people are on. Put simply, instead of giving a tax cut to the richest of Americans, we should give a pay raise to teachers in this country who our students depend on to succeed, period, 
No ands, no ifs, no buts. Instead of allowing millionaires, billionaires, and massive corporations to keep their tax breaks and special interest loopholes, we Democrats believe we should invest in teachers and students. We already know the Republican tax bill was a scam for the rich, but it's not too late to undo its most egregious components and do some good for our teachers, our students, and our middle class families. Leader Pelosi. Thank you very much. Uh, Leader Schumer, I'm picking up where you left off in terms of budget priorities. Uh, it is important to note uh, that the investment that we make in our teachers and the education of our children is the most important investment a country can make and families can make in wanting that for their children. Nothing, Mr. Leader, as you know, nothing brings more to the Treasury than investments in education, early childhood, K through 12, higher education, postgrad, lifetime learning for our workers. But in that crucial time, when our children are in school, children have teachers as the custodian of their future. As the leader said, this is something that should be revered, and it should certainly be rewarded with the pay that it deserves. And that's why we have a better deal, and a better deal, better jobs, better pay, better future for our children by having a better deal for our teachers. I'm honored to be here with Leader Schumer, Bobby Scott, our ranking member in the House uh, Committee on Education and Workforce, is a pres uh, in the hearing right now with Secretary DeVos. Hopefully he will join us, but he has been a great champion on this issue, as has Senator Patty Murray, a real champion, highly recognized for all of her time in Congress and even before. And we're all honored to be here with the president of the National Education Association, Lily Eskelson Garcia, and the head of the American Federation of Teachers. Randy Weingarten, thank you for your service and leadership to our country. Thank you for honoring us with your presence today. And thank you to the teachers all around the country. America's teachers have organized, mobilized, and marched for the dignity of a good wage. Democrats are so proud to join them as they take the fight for their dignity and their paychecks to this Capitol. We tell children, it's very interesting, we tell children that education is so important that they should study and work hard and pay attention in school. And yet, and that's the message we want them to receive, and yet the message that they get when they see teachers are underpaid. We promote it as a value with our children. We undervalue it when we underpay our teachers. When, teachers go, when children go to substandard schools, they get a different message about how important education is and when t children are denied the tools they need to succeed in school. The injustice touches every community in our country. Our teachers deserve our support. They deserve a raise. Yet instead of making smart, strong investments in our education system, the Republicans are fighting to slash teacher, imagine this, slash teacher and school budgets, eliminating Title II, Title IIA, professional development and support for educators. Right there, slash it. Really, with stiff competition, this is one of the dumbest things that the Republicans have done. Because again, nothing brings more to the Treasury to reduce the deficit than investing in education, and yet they are cutting it. Republicans are giving our teachers a raw deal. Democrats, as the leader said, are offering a better deal, raising teachers' salaries, raising teachers' pay, protecting teachers' freedom to negotiate for better wages, investing in our crumbling schools. As part of a better deal, Democrats are proud to commit to creating an ambitious $50 billion fund for school infrastructure and resources. Our schools deserve 21st century classrooms and up-to-date technology. They deserve quality public education and safe, modern schools. That's what our students and our teachers deserve. They deserve a place where they can succeed regardless of their zip code, and they deserve strong schools that attract and retain our best educators and school administrators. Now, we were going to hear from Bobby Scott, but Bobby Scott is, as I say, in a hearing, 
and he will be yielding uh, with great respect and admiration to the distinguished ranking member of the Health Committee in the Senate, a champion for education, a champion for our children, Senator Murray. Uh, let me just add, no one's done more for education in the entire U.S. Senate well. than Senator Patty Murray in the great state <laughs> of Washington. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> Leader Pelosi. <laughs> Washington. Leader Pelosi, Leader Schumer, thank you so much for leading us and our country towards a better deal for teachers and students, and I'm delighted that our leaders of teachers who are here with us, uh, Lily and, uh, and uh, Randy, are going to be talking to you in just a minute about why this is so important across our country, so it's great to be here with you today as well. You know, for millions of Americans, a high-quality public education has allowed them to climb the ladder of opportunity. It allows students to strive for jobs in places they never dreamed of, and it can set them up for success to provide a better life for their families. That is certainly what a good public education did for me and my family, and I know that we're far from alone. So providing every student with a high-quality e public education and the opportunities that it brings should be a top priority of governments at every level. Unfortunately, we have seen education fall on the priority list for some in Congress and in state capitals, especially when it comes to funding. And you know, without strong investments in education, our students, our future workforce, is going to pay the price. So in addition to increasing investments in our teachers and infrastructure for public schools, which is something teachers and parents across the country have been in the streets, as we, as we have seen fighting for, and which Democrats strongly support, we have to also increase funding for critical programs that provide a high quality education. We have to continuously strive for equity and make sure all of our students have the tools and support they need to achieve their dreams, no matter where they live or how they learn or how much money their parents make. And in today's changing economy, we have to invest in a well-rounded education that includes a variety of opportunities, computer science, STEM subjects, as well as civics and the arts. Now, this is something that shouldn't be partisan, but sadly, too often it is. For generations, strong public education has been seen as the one of the most important ways we can offer a hand up on the economic ladder. And by increasing investments in low-income schools and communities, we can make sure that American tradition continues and take another important step towards closing the achievement gap and helping elevate the students that need our help the most. Today's students are our future workforce. They are our innovators. They are our business leaders. They are our business owners. So investing in now, them now is an investment in our future. That's what Democrats are fighting for, and I'm hoping Republicans join us, uh, but we are in this for the fight. And I'm very delighted again to have the leaders of teachers with us, and we'll introduce to you Lily Escalon Garcia, uh, head of NEA, who's done an amazing job. Hey, muy buenas tardes. I want to thank um, Leader Pelosi, uh, Leader Schumer, and Senator Murray for their support in this, but I s really want to thank this woman for what you just said, because she said, thank you for your service. I'm an Army brat. My dad was in the military uh, as a career military. He used to thank the teachers of his six children for their service. It is so meaningful to us that people understand um, why we got into something like teaching. I'm a sixth grade teacher from Utah, so I, of course, got into it for the big bucks. Um, <laughs> we, we never expected to get rich. We expected respect. We expected people to do their part while we were doing 110% of our part. And so to have something that says that public schools and the teachers and support staff that serve America's students deserve a better deal. It just sings to me. We have had that raw deal for too long. You've seen the hashtag Red for Ed movement going across this country saying enough is enough. We will do everything for our students. You know we will take a bullet for our students. There is nothing that we leave on the table when it comes to fighting for our students. But we need the political forces that were elected to actually give us 
those school buildings, to give us the supplies and the books that we need, to make it so that we could actually raise our own families on a modest teacher's salary and not have to um, clock in on the weekends as a cashier or an Uber driver. Um, we have new teachers who are quitting teaching right now because they can't afford to pay off their student loans. And of course, it doesn't help when the Department of Education's contracted um, bill collectors are converting their scholarships and grants into, um, into loans and, and charging these amazing teachers. Um, it, it, it's amazing what we're, we're having to put up with right now. But we know that we can do better. And to have these very powerful people here say we have friends, educators have friends in the highest levels of government, it, it is so important to us. We want to make sure that those Title I, fund, Title I funding that serves our most vulnerable children in poverty, that they do better. We know we can do better with repairing those old school buildings. We know we could do better in fully funding the federal part of special education. That alone would hit every single school district. The richest and the poorest school districts have children with disabilities. When Congress does not fully fund the special ed obligation, it means that districts have to pick that up. And it means they have less money for everything else. And of course, of course we can do better with the compensation of some pretty modestly paid um, servants of children that we are here to serve America's children. And we simply want to be able to also raise our own families. So we are here to support these amazing leaders to encourage everyone, Republicans and Democrats, to get behind something that says we can do better for our public schools, and um, to thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Next. Oh. Yes. Right. <laughs> and, yes, and now uh, my sister uh, and a uh, New York social studies uh, teacher for many years, uh, the president of the American Federation of Teachers, Randy Weingarten. So um, it's, it's hard to say thank you enough. What these Democratic leaders have seen is what we are seeing all across America, what is happening today in schools as we speak. The conditions facing teachers and students are not a new phenomena. 29 states still spend less on public education than they did before the 2008 recession. Average teacher salaries have declined relative to inflation in 39 states between 2010 and 2016. 59% of educators work a second job. We're the only professionals I know who as part of our job, it is assumed that we will dig into our own pockets to cover what elected officials are failing to provide for our students. This deprivation of resources didn't happen yesterday. It is a result of generations of harmful policies that have prioritized mm -hmm. testing, school budget cuts, tax breaks for the wealthy, and top-down education mandates over listening to educators, listening to parents, valuing students, parents, and communities, as frankly, Senator Murray did over and over again in the ultimate successful passage of the new federal education law. It shouldn't take teachers acting as human shields for their students, as they have in Parkland, Florida, in Santa Fe, Texas, in West Virginia, in Arizona, in Oklahoma, and elsewhere to get the conditions that kids need. And that is why this agenda is so important. And that is why we are so grateful to leaders Schumer and Pelosi and ranking members Murray and Scott and all the Democrats in Congress because they get it. The better deal for teachers and students 
It shows that Democrats are proposing real solutions, not empty rhetoric. I'm tired of hearing Betsy DeVos one more time say platitudes about how teachers are important. If they're important, don't propose solutions like you did in Michigan, in Florida. Support what leaders Pelosi and leader Schumer are doing right now. This is an agenda, but I digress. This is an agenda that prioritizes investment in our children, investment in teaching and learning, and investment in our profession. And it protects teachers' freedom to advocate for themselves. We're also really tired of people who think we have enough judgment and a good enough good sense to actually carry weapons in our classroom, but we don't have enough good judgment and a good, good sense to make decisions in our classrooms. This is a really wonderfully crafted agenda. And anyone, Democrat or Republican alike, who says that they believe in teaching and learning and our kids' future must support this agenda. Thank you very much. Well, that's great. First, and I'm also proud to be the only male here. I'm glad we are, have so many women here. We should have more. I doubt that Bobby's going to make it because he had his hearing and now we have votes uh, shortly on the floor. But if he were here, he'd be talking about giving uh, teachers the right to bargain collectively uh, to eliminate any obstacles to that. And he'd spend some time on the importance of uh, funding for children with special needs that we have an obligation to do. So we have important work to do. He's doing some in committee now. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Questions on this subject? The, the, the $50 billion goes to salaries and benefits and things like that, but this is a hundred, I believe it is $40 billion package which gives the schools flexibility for school safety, particularly on the infrastructure part. Yes. Give us a little time. Well, I think the odds of something like this passing are large in the next several years. Uh, our Republican colleagues uh, have so far not funded education. They've slashed it. If you look at the president, the budget President Trump submitted on education, it was a joke. But fortunately, Leader Pelosi and I in the omnibus negotiation were able to get some significant increases for the important education uh, positions. Uh, Patty Murray, Bobby Scott, and others helped lead us in that direction. So. The American people realize that teachers are so important and believe they should be paid more. The, the um, uh, demonstrations and walkouts around the country have got huge support of the American people. And then when you say, where well, you're going to pay for it, you say, just well, the very wealthiest should not get such a large tax cut. You pay for it that way, you have overwhelming support. So I think, you know, our day is going to come sooner than you think. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Thank you.